Why not have several furries locked away in your mountain? I've heard the Empire are a fan of furries. They'll pay big money for them. So we have a furry fight club in a closet in the back of the base. More strip mining. More strip mining. Strip mining is that Dwarven foreplay. <laughs> grow, children, grow. Look at this little cowboy child, Rain Man. Grow tier four now. Choose one passion from two options. Choose one trait from four options. Go, Rain Man, go. That gotcha. Crying. That's so weird. So we put the child or the baby in there while they were crying and they came out as a three-year-old that's having the baby crying breakdown. You're three years old. You can't be crying. Stop it. All right. Gatchy gets a real name. Lumberjack. Welcome in, Lumberjack. I don't have a weapon for you right now, little child. So we'll make another chain shotgun. Oh, wrong religion. The children. Yeah. And I might have to imprison... Like, maybe at least... No. I gotta get Rom. Rom is the one that needs converted. It's a real friggin' pain, too. The lowest we've gotten Rom is 85%. <laughs> Formed recently. How long was that? Masterwork rituals are about our only chance, yeah. Why not try ritual conversion? I have been doing it on cooldown. That's what I just checked. It's still on cooldown. So at the moment, that would go in the opposite direction. It's only a 30% chance at the moment, which would make it worse. Most likely. But I've been... You can do both. You can do both. So, maybe that's why you're asking. So, for anyone that doesn't know, you can do both. It's probably an exploit. But basically, if you do the convert skill first, then you can right-click on the spot. You see how it shows it down here? But even if you do this first, you can right-click on the spot and you can go to convert even if you've already done the one-on-one -on -one, one. So, you can do both as long as you do the convert one-on-one -on -one, one first. Ritual conversion shares the cooldown with the command only if you do it in the other direction. If you do the talking one-on-one -on -one -one first, it does not put it on cooldown. You see how it's nine days, even though we just did it, it didn't go down. So it's, it was the other way around originally and they tried to fix it. Now it works the other way. What's in general a good setup for a barracks? Your goal is to get the barracks to at least 80 impressiveness. Over 120 is better. And then just put all your beds, your dining and your recreation in the same room. That's, that's it. Just get your impressiveness over 80 and then eventually over 120. Prison break. He threw a friggin' grenade on this shelf. Way to go. I'm gonna destroy this shelf before you kill me. The furries are escaping. The furries are escaping. Child, capture them. Prisoners had your ma uh, had to break them. It depends on the kind. Prison breaks have been that way for several several years. If you have a prison break event, then they just open the doors. And if you look at it, it'll say they've somehow defeated the door locks and are making their way out. But if they have a berserk, they'll beat the doors. But those are two different events. Kids can't have beer until thirteen. It's not my rule. That's the game's rule. Otherwise, I'd be giving them. Give them beer already. Oh no, we have three people of another faction. I think I'm gonna imprison some of these kids to convert them, but we really need ROM converted. That's that's one of the big problems right now. We really need ROM converted. And I can't really arrest and convert ROM. It'll cause some really big problems. Alright, let's name this little kid uh Pfeiffer. Old enough to use a gun, not old enough to drink a beer. That's right, just like here. Manhunter pack. All right, that's our first manhunter in a while. Let's go ahead and shut this off. And Rhino, run over here. Close that door. Okay, let's see what it is. 31 links. No hot cougars in our area today. Lumberjack child, you get chain shotgun. Congratulations. We're so glad when Rama's converted. It's gonna make everything so much better. Depending on lavish food, I use lavish food as a drug. Look how happy my people are. We don't, we don't need any fine meals or lavish meals, but I will use them in some playthroughs depending on what else is going on. But I mainly use it as a drug for mood boost uh, when it's needed rarely. 
Stop Manhunter packs who break down the door. They can if they see you go through a door, but if they don't, then they won't. You want to see what Granny used to say about links? All right. I know what my Granny would say about these, these links, she would say. Hold on. I need to set my wife on fire. And it's actually kind of crazy how slow it is to get more baby dwarves that purple. Uh, anyway, it, it takes a long time to get them um, because we don't have, we can't have them like join as joint events or as uh, like the ritual events. So in the future runs like this might be better to put the uh, growth factor of children just a little bit higher or unless you want like a really, really long run, which is fine. We're not super far into the run, so uh, it's fine at the moment, but either that or, or download the mod that makes so that the ideology ritual event for joins will be your xenotype. All right, convert is ready again. Where are you, Rom? 80%, slowest they've ever been. Lack of beards is disturbing. I wonder if these children, as soon as, hang on. What are the genders of the kids? One male, uh, so two male, two female children. I wonder if the children, as soon as they hit 13, are immediately gonna get big bushy beards. I bet they will. I bet they will. Bolt goods trader. We actually need to trade with them. So hopefully these cats don't. Oh, the cats are actually going to sleep. We could go get some shooting experience. Pfeiffer, grab that shotgun, child. Let's go get you guys some shooting experience. It's about time you killed your first animal. Three years old, after all. Well, if you guys could hit something. That's enough. Beer, bears, and beards. Forced descent for what? Nope. Nope. When you ask how many hours of sleep does it reduce sleep, quick sleeper, sleepy, any combo of that need? That is in my scheduling guide if you want to go to that. The short answer to quick sleepers and the like, especially quick sleepers in like masterwork beds or such, or such is either biphasic or an all anything schedule. That's the short answer, but you can actually set your quick sleepers to just literally make their schedules anything across the board and it functions really well on on quick sleepers. So ABC always buy components. That's right. Smoke impact shooting can be used in open field combat without turrets. Smoke decreases accuracy of anyone shooting through it. So if you're thinking like, maybe I'll put smoke on my own people and that will obscure us and we can attack the enemy. It's also reducing your own accuracy. So smoke is going to reduce your accuracy and the enemies. So it's mainly good for turrets and, and mech turrets specifically. Uh, but yeah, if you're using smoke, you're going to be hitting your own accuracy. Yeah. Smoke belts have no good use in the game. Smoke belts, you can use them to cover your retreat. So I think that's why they were originally put in. You can also use them to, uh, again, remove line of sight of turrets. So you can use them to take out turrets, especially early game before you have like smoke launcher or something like that. And if you're retreating, you might as well drop smoke behind you as you go so the enemy has less accuracy. I think that's mainly what they were kind of intended for initially. Under what condition would I suggest using plasma swords? Okay, so there's a couple things. If you are in any kind of situation where the enemy being lit on fire, therefore not being able... To, so if, if an enemy's on fire, they no longer have collision. So that means they can walk over the top of your block blockers right and they can go where you don't want them to they can literally walk over the top of everyone so if that's not an issue then it's awesome to have one one of those times that is kind of awesome is you can actually another manhunter you can actually use the plasma sword as a good melee hunting weapon uh, as long as like you don't get a herd of animals attacking you you can actually use it on an animal and that makes the animal panic and every time you do that, they're going to stop attacking you and run around like crazy. So you can kind of use it for that. But really, the Plaza Sword is fine anytime that you don't care about collision. So if you're doing like a lot of melee characters early, you're doing low wealth, you have a low amount of enemies, enemies are separated, you know, whatever, and you don't mind the, the enemy panicking. Overall, though, I really don't like Plaza Swords because it breaks collision. Yeah, exactly. Like a tamer, so you have someone go out and you're taming something and the... The animal attacks you, The they can just hit it with that instead, and the animal will catch on fire and run off, so. All right, this is the first time I, oh my God, <laughs> 72 squirrels. This is the first time we've had double manhunter from Cassandra, so. 
Look at all those squirrels. <laughs> That's a lot of squirrels. How come I use marine helmets in game and not cataphract? It just depends on if I find cataphract. Cataphract is better, obviously, a lot better actually, but cataphract takes two tech prints. Usually I complete my games before I ever get one tech print. So it just depends. If I get two cataphract tech prints, which are also very expensive, you go buy them, thousands of silver. I usually don't keep that much silver on hand unless I'm just doing some kind of extra run. But yeah, use whatever the best helmet is you have ac access to or access to. Obviously, Cataphract Helmet is better than Marine Helmet, but you have to unlock it, right? So in the last run that I finished, I never found a Cataphract uh, tech print. Never found one. So I use Marine Helmets. Is plate armor usable or not worth the material? The problem with plate armor is that, and I really wish they would expand like the Neolithic and medieval part of the game a little bit and make it take a little bit longer and make the things there more, um, more needed. But the, one of the problems with plate armor, not only is it not great, but you can get flak so early. And I, I mean, you can make flak very early, but also you're gonna have pirates dropping flak early, very easily. You're gonna have like, you can trade for flak pretty cheap, very early. And so it's like, why make plate armor? I mean, if it's the only thing you have access to, if that's the only thing that's dropped or all you have, it will absolutely help, especially if you have like a melee blocker early. But for me, it's like you graduate from plate armor so quickly that I just don't bother. Yeah, I would just rather use flak, even like with, with initial optimism and low expectations, like even tainted flak early on people, it's fine, you know? Yeah, even tribals get through the Neolithic and medieval part really quick without mods in. I don't want to expand much more right now because I don't want raids to get any bigger than what we've already seen. Right now we could get probably like eight to 10 centipedes, which would be a crazy fight with this. Are the variants of the standard armor worth crafting? Uh, they can be okay. The thing to note about those special armors is they have a little bit lower defense. Oh, muscle parasites. Muscle parasites take 300% tending. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna switch everyone to medicine. Um, they're a little bit less um, defensive, but then you get the bonuses. Like you get the armor that has the built-in uh, like jump pack, you know, that opens up a new another slot for you. They're they're good. They're 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 kind of yeah. They're kind of fun to use. Kind of cool to use. They're kind of niche, obviously. Obviously, but and the the hit on defense isn't probably going to matter for you, honestly. So I think they're kind of fun to use. The cool factor goes a long way. That's right. From your little tier, do you think the typical game should be extended to like ten years? My games usually end between four and six. Yeah, how did the game extended to maybe 10? Now it's it's kind of weird because we can't see the statistics of the game. I'm, you notice with this update in RimWorld 1.4, there's a end user license agreement that you have to accept now. I'm wondering if they're actually using that to pull RimWorld data, because it would be interesting to me. I've said for a long time, things like, you know, when people are talking about mods, I'm like, I bet you that the vast majority of people that buy RimWorld never use mods. I, I bet, and I know like most people that are on like Reddit and, and online and Twitch and stuff probably use some mods, but I'm guessing most people that buy the game never use mods, right? Um, and I, it would be cool to see some of the statistics like, all right, how many people actually do launch a ship? How many years does it on average does it take someone to get to the credits? And I bet it's vastly different than my, my playthroughs. I'm not meaning that as like mine are better. I'm just meaning like, it would be kind of cool to see what, like, all right, what's the average number of years someone does a playthrough before they before they see the credits or before they die or whatever, you know? And I actually think it's very long. I think it's very long. Way longer than my typical runs. 3,300 hours, never launched a ship. Yeah, yeah. Royal Tribute Collector, there's only one left. Man, I was hoping not one of our children would grow up for this. Mine are better though. No, there's... As long as you're playing for fun, there's no run that's better than another. I really wanted an aesthetic for the Royal, but I might just wait. They'll be back next year. Children, I need you to grow up. Rayman, he's six years old. Go Rayman, go. What's some stuff we can start doing that's not gonna increase our wealth? I mean, strip mining, getting this extra mushroom areas ready. Actually, any on your own terms? Yeah, I was telling some people too. Someone, someone a while back was like, What's the goal in RimWorld? And I was like, well, there are credits. You can get to the credits, but also a lot of people come up with their own goals that are just whatever you like. Like literally, let's see how many cats I can get before I die. Like, you know, 
Let's see what number of casts we can get to before the game crashes or we die. Like, that's a goal. That's a goal in Rimworld. It's not going to get you the credits, but... I guess I could go ahead and start building some of this as well. 300 goats. They got mating. It's a lot of goats. I want to be able to come over here during raids. So I still want raids to be able to leave this way. So I'm going to mine that out a little bit. Is it possible to one-hit a Thrumbo? Yeah, absolutely. With the right weapon. <laughs> like a Doomsday Rocket. That, would, that should probably do it. Just want my dwarven babies to grow up. Don't let your dwarf babies grow up to be cowboys. Rayman's trying hard to be a cowboy. Cow dwarf. Selling beer, but you need to live. Yeah, but the excess we can sell. What is this about? The children got in a fist fight. Child named Lumberjack. Rayman trying to convert Lumberjack to their own religion. The children are trying to convert each other to their religion. Where do you go, Ray Rayman? Convert him to the dwarves. Excellent. Good job. Oh my god, Romnom is converting our our colony out of dwarfism. I need one of these children to be good at social. One of these dwarven children to be good at social. All right, let's try this. So first off, we got Romnom here. We're going to go ahead and uh, gonna go ahead and hit convert on Romnom. Down to 86%. And then we right click here and hit conversion ritual. You see? You can do both. So if you do the one-on-one -on -one talk first... And you go here, it's going to tell you you can't, right? If you click on it, it's like, oh, no, you did it too recently. But you can get past that by clicking on your moral guide, right-clicking the symbol, and then going to conversion. So that's what I was telling you guys earlier. And then you can do both of them. Come on, I need a masterful. I need a masterful one. Romnom, please. Please, Romnom. Romnom. Convert. From your heathen ways. Effective! Down to 56%. Right. Can't believe you'd cheat like this. <laughs> 56%. 56 Not masterful, but good. Rom nom, I'm about to imprison you now. <laughs> if one of these children are good at social, you're going to prison, just so you know. Rayman, please grow up. Please grow up, Rayman. He'll be he'll be adult before we know it. It's only day two of the run, so I'm I'm probably being a little impatient on these dwarven children. Be like, why aren't you old yet? Pro probably, probably. Someone's getting converted. I think Romnom's doing it. Romnom's already back at fifty nine percent. Sander will be attacking again soon. Let's go ahead and uh, uh we'll we'll leave him on work for now. It's fine. Bring the children in though. Vat Purple of the Dwarves. Let's get a name for this little child. It's Bidness Goat. You're in, Goat. Let's make you a shotgun. <laughs> goat, you're too big for a crib. What are you doing? I have a crib assigned to you. See what I want. I'm not too big for a crib. There you go, Goat. Enjoy your shotgun. The caliber sniper rifle count as light range or heavy range. <laughs> uh, I don't think they are in the heavy category. I can check though. Let's see what counts. Really? Huh. So incendiary launcher, smoke launcher, MP, heavy SMG counts as ranged heavy, interestingly enough. Sniper rifle does count, so we could technically use those, I suppose. I don't want snipers are good. I just I did a bunch of sniper playthroughs with Winston Waves not too long ago, but. Maybe I'll use some of this one, but it's not really one of the goals, but shotguns for the shotgun god. All right, here we go. The raids, the raids. What is it? Transport pods attack preemptively. Let's see how big transport pod arrivals are now. We got 22 and they got heavy weapons. Pig people, pig people. Uh, it's a mix, actually. I do see a couple impids. Here they come, and they're getting drugged up, ready to go. Drugged up, ready to go. Uh, um, Bidness Goat's first raid. Actually, Muzz, grab this.
Look how slow children are at throwing EMP grenades. Holy crap. Ah, those jerks. Die, pig. Gotta fix that power thing over there. Pigs are bound to get the business. <laughs> when you butcher pig skins, you just get human meat and leather, yeah. Hey, poor scene. Move it or lose it. We got poor scene, Meeg, Pulper, Lisa, Paunch, Boog. Speaking of Warhammer. Punch. Guys, come on. Excuse me, Porcine. <laughs> hey. Hello. Guys, it's scary in there. Did you see what's going on? <laughs> Guys, you don't want to do this. Just trust me. Just trust me. You don't want to go that way. They're starting to get hungry. They'll eventually give up and leave. Yeah. But it takes too long. I need them to come in here before we start having breakdowns. Our gun's not long enough range. <laughs> They're lighting themselves on fire in the tunnel. Porcine's not moving though. Porcine's having none of it. They lit themselves on fire. They fire foam popped it. Why won't they attack? It's because Porcine's blocking their way. I have no idea why Porcine's stuck there. I think he's like trying to go set something on fire. Oh, there we go. There we go. I unclogged him. We got the power back on. Let's see, Rom's happy. They can deliver. Yeah, I gotta get this fixed. All right, Rom, you got the bodies done. Good. Starvation on Pfeiffer. Just literally eat food, Pfeiffer. Just literally eat food. Are those vanilla mushrooms? Yeah, these have been in the game over a year. Yeah. Nutri fungus. Nothing you see in my game, like everything you see in mine, is there's going to be no mods. The only thing you'll see that's a mod is the 4x button, Fahrenheit, and Celsius at the same time, and me being able to zoom out further. Everything else in my game, if you see it, it's not a mod. Do they taste like vanilla? I hope not. Sounds terrible. Vanilla mushrooms? Oh yeah, P music. You can hear that one, but you won't see that one. That's right. Is there a reason I don't build walls over the wiring? That's literally what I'm doing, but I just hadn't got to it in this run yet. And the reason I'm moving it over, if you're wondering, is Breacher attack throughs are five tiles wide with termites. So I need this to be at least five tiles wide so that they don't just destroy it. So if you're wondering why I don't just build the wall right there, it would get destroyed by Breachers. The reason I don't put the children in Hall and Clean, when we were testing it, the children, I don't know if it's still like that, but when Biotech first came out, if you had children assigned to like jobs like this and you had them on schedules um, other than like the all anything or whatever, it was worse for growth tiers and learning. I have no idea if it's still like that. There's been so many hot fixes, but that's why. I mean, we don't really need a lot of things hauled around right now anyway, but I don't know if it's still that way. Probably not, honestly. I don't know. So many things have changed so fast. 
That's the, just the nature of a new DLC, though, I suppose. You'd rather fight insects than half the xenotypes? Yeah, like, I would 100% pick for one of our events. Like, almost every time, I'd rather have an infestation over, like, a mech attack right now, for instance. Can you launch a ship from under the mountain? No. You can build a ship, and then you can put a roof over it, and then you can launch it from under the roof, but you can't build it under a roof. And since you can't remove a red mountain, you can't do that. Yeah, we actually built a roof over part of the ship in the last run, and people were like, don't let them build that roof over there, you won't be able to launch the ship. And I was like, no, 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 it doesn't work that way. <laughs> but it is a, uh, a common misconception. You can't build it under a roof, but you can actually launch it from a roof if you build the roof over the ship after you build the ship. There's not really a reason to build it, I guess, a roof over it, but you can. What will I use the water for? I'm just using it for a, um, I will use it just for, for heat, to get heat out of the base. So when we need more power, I'll probably use this area for power. And also as a, as a way to use the telescope. Actually, I'm curious if there's more thin rock roof right there. If there's more thin rock roof right there, we'll probably use that for like our mineral scanner and stuff. Anyway, uh, right now we're fixing the power issue and we're letting the babies grow up. All right, children, I am actually going to set you to clean. I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm the worst parent ever. Yeah, there's no other research we really need right now. So I'm just, it's its fine. The main ones that are idle are the children. So the children can't research anyway, so it doesn't matter. But I could just have research to just have it. But like maybe we eventually make the flat screen, but kids can't research. They're too dumb. Uh, oh, is this ready? Okay, ROM. ROM's already back up to 80%. Oh my God. Oh my God. Too happy? Uh, they're a high mate. It's gonna be almost impossible to make them super unhappy. If one of these children end up ends up having good social. Rom Nom's going to jail for a little bit. Birthing rooms to the left. Those are individual barracks. Count as three other people, so each of those individual rooms is the barracks. That's right. That's right. I be careful saying things like that though, or I'll have someone, especially later on in the comments, they're like, "What? Really? No, no, not really." Power restored. Would it be worth arresting them? I don't have anyone that can convert them in prison. So last time I arrested someone that was really good at social and really good at proselytizing, and I had all crappy social people, because all my doors are bad at social, by the way. Uh, last time I did that, the prisoners started converting the people coming in to convert them. So the person would come in and try and convert them, and like, no, 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 let me tell you about my God instead. And the people would start getting converted. So, yeah. In fact, it was a prostitute that was doing that. Oh, man. One of the crazy... Uh, one of the craziest, well, definitely the craziest first episode of any series I've ever done is the Fluid Ideology playthrough. There was, it's one of the craziest stories uh, in that first episode back. as well. Your steadfast it was a naked brutality run in the jungle against Randy. And it's it's the epitome of how terrible Randy can be. How just god awful he, he can punish you in the jungle in the early game, right? So that first episode of the Fluid run has so many RimWorld stories in it. I remember someone coming in, we were like four years in, we just finished our first research. Yes, four years in, double the length of this run, we just finished researching beds, and someone was like, you're not very far from being four years in. I'm like, you are telling the truth. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. But anyway, in that in that one, um, it was my colonist, and we got a good kind of recruit, and we needed to convert her, and she was that um, child idol, prostitute idol background. Don't read that background, by the way. It's terrible. Terrible. And uh, we were trying to convert her and she started converting my my colonist and I only had one person. So she was going to make my ideology just die out. So I killed her. Twitch streamer admits to having problems with prostitutes. Locked her in the closet. Later killed her. Oh, it was absolutely awful. I had two to three diseases at a time. A little bit of spoilers about that run. The run was saved by a man in black, but maybe not the way you think. My character was literally laying down, dying. He was, like, wiggling outside because he had, like, three diseases. And a man in black showed up. I said, oh. The man in black came and nursed me back to health. But then we were starving to death. So I took the man in black's clothing off. I put them on, and I killed him and ate him to survive. <laughs> so we, we named him Meals in Black. I'm telling you, the beginning of the fluid ideology run, absolutely nuts. Check it out sometime. It's a long one, though. It's, it's a long VOD. It's a rim world. It's a rim world. Mm -hmm.